Hello everyone, for this particular lecture video, we are now on the third installment for the topic gases. For the lesson objectives, we have number one, explain Graham's law of diffusion and diffusion. Second is calculate computations involving gas diffusion and diffusion. And last but not the least is perform psychometrical computations using gas equations. Now, this will be the topic outline for this particular lecture video. First is, we'll be dealing with gas stoichiometry. And then last but not the least, apply Graham's law of effusion and diffusion. Let's start with gas stoichiometry calculation. A gas is present in either the reactant or product side of the chemical reaction involved. In gas stoichiometry, we will simply use the ideal gas equation as well as other gas laws should the need be necessary. So, ibig sabihin po, kapag gas stoichiometry calculation, kalimitan na ginagamit po ay, ay ideal gas equation, pero kung kinakailangan na gumamit ng iba pang gas law, ay pwede naman po. So, sa mga tuwid, pag gas stoichiometry, lagi pong may involved na chemical equation na may lamang gases, pwedeng sa reactant o kaya sa product side. And then again, ginagamitan ng ideal gas equation o kaya mga iba't iba pang gas laws kung kinakailangan. Okay, now let me give you an example. So again, sorry for the ambient noises that you may be hearing along the way as we do the discussion. But nonetheless, let us focus with the content. Okay, so example. Acetylene gas can be produced by slowly reacting calcium carbide with water. So you have here calcium carbide with addition of 2 moles of water yields to acetylene and then carbon hydroxide. Okay, so this is already balanced. Okay, as you can see from the, from, you can see, as you can see from the numerical coefficients, if 15.0 grams of calcium carbide is allowed to react with excess water, what will be the volume in milliliters of acetylene gas produced under atmospheric pressure and 298 Kelvin? So let me write the given. Okay, so let me write the given. So these are the given. Okay. First one, so you're given here is mass. So you have your mass of calcium carbide being 15.0 grams of calcium carbide. You have here... Um, Atmospheric pressure, as mentioned, under atmospheric pressure, so that will be one atmosphere. Although there is no indication of the number one, again, when we see under atmospheric pressure in English, uh, English po, ibig sabihin niyan ay isa. Okay? Under atmospheric pressure means one atmosphere. Wala lang numero nakita, pero yun ibig sabihin niyan. Then you have your temperature, 298 Kelvin. Okay, and then we have our required. The required from the problem is volume. So we need to solve for volume in milliliters. Of what? Volume in milliliters of acetylene. So acetylene is C2H2. Okay, so our requirement is volume of a particular substance, specifically C2H2. Okay, now what about the equation? Now, with this particular gas stoichiometry calculation, we can deduce or we can say that the equation that is possible is your PV is equal to NRT. Meaning to say, yung ideal gas equation po ang best na magagamit dito sa uri ng problem na ito. Bakit? Dahil po, with the PV is equal to NRT, we can easily solve for the volume. Okay? So again, we use the ideal gas equation which is PV is equal to NRT because using this particular equation, we can easily solve for the volume. Now, since we are dealing with PV is equal to NRT or the ideal gas equation, we also have the given R. So that is 0 0.0821 liter atmosphere all over mole Kelvin. Okay, so let us create an equation or derive an equation for volume. So divide both sides by pressure. You have volume is equal to NRT all over pressure. So let's check if all given are provided. Your R is provided. Your temperature is also provided. And then your pressure is also provided. Seemingly, ang kulang lang po natin ay itong N. 
Ibig sabihin, kulang po tayo ng number of moles. Ngayon, kung babasahin ulit natin yung problem, wala tayong makitang given na number of moles. Saan kaya yun manggagaling? Ang N o ang value ng number of moles ay dito po manggagaling sa 15.0 grams of calcium carbide. Dito na po papasok ang ideyang gas stoichiometry. Kaya po siya gas stoichiometry kasi from grams gagawin mong mole. Naalala natin na ang unit ng N ay mole. So, kaya siya gas stoichiometry. Kasi kailangan mo munang dumaan sa proseso ng pag-a-apply ng stoichiometry bago ka mag-proceed sa gas equation. Okay, so kaya siya gas stoichiometry. Okay, so with that said, kailangan po muna nating itama o gawing mole unit itong 15.0 grams of calcium carbide. Okay? So we need to convert um grams of so we are now on the solution. We need to convert grams of calcium carbide into the unit mole mole of what? Okay? So yung grams of calcium carbide we need it to be converted into mole. Tama na mole, pero anong substance? Since ang required po natin ay C2H2, i-convert natin si grams CAC2 into mole C2H2. Ulitin ko po. Again, itong mass, itong grams, kailangan gawin nating mole unit. Kasi nga, itong N, Number of moles ay dapat naka-unit mole. So, itong grams hindi pa pwede. So, kailangan natin i-convert gram into unit mole. Next is, kailangan itong gram CAC2 ay maging mole ng alin? Mole ng C2H2. Bakit C2H2 ulit? Dahil sa C2H2 po ang ating required. So, from being calcium carbide, kailangan maging acetylene or C2H2. So, grams CAC2 into mole unit C2H2 or grams carbon, grams calcium carbide rather, converted into mole unit of acetylene. So let's start. So that is 15.0 grams of calcium carbide. Okay, so we will just be applying whatever you learn from your mass relationship. Okay, so the first thing that I need to do is convert gram into um, unit mole. So dapat po ganito yung proseso grams of calcium carbide maging moles of calcium carbide. Ang gagamitin po natin ay molar mass. Molar mass ni calcium carbide. Now, since molar mass ni calcium carbide ang gagamitin nating factor, and then, as you can see and read from the problem, walang binigay na molar mass ni calcium carbide. So, we need to solve for the molar mass of calcium carbide from scratch. So you have here calcium and then carbon. Carbon is one atom, calcium is two atoms, and then multiply them by their respective um, atomic masses. Calcium is this one. I'll be getting up until two decimal places. 40.08. Calcium, uh, here carbon is this one, 12.01. And then adding up their summation of the products, 40.08. Plus a quantity 2 times 12.01, we have 64.10. 64.10 grams per mole. Okay, so now at this point, the 64.10 gram per mole, this is the molar mass of calcium carbide. So I'll be using that one. One mole of car calcium carbide and then 64.10 grams. So grams will be cancelled. I now have moles of calcium carbide. However, ang kinakailangan po, okay, ay mole unit ni C2H2. So, kailangan po natin i-convert, okay, kailangan po natin i-convert si mole calcium carbide into unit mole C2H2. Papaano? Gagamit tayo ng molar, molar ratio. So, the molar ratio's unit is moles all over mole, okay? The substance at the denominator must be CAC2 para makancel po yan. And then at the numerator, that must be C2H2. That's since yun ang hinahanap natin. Now what about the values? For your numerator, just look at the balanced chemical equation. The numerical coefficient for C2H2 is 1. And the numerical coefficient for CAC2 is 1 as well. So we can now cancel the unit. The remaining unit is now. Okay mole C2H2, which is the one that we are required 
to solve for. Okay, so input this one in the calculator. Okay. So I will be having 15.0 times 1 all over 64.01 times 1 over 1. We have this particular bit. Now rounding is off, rounding this off, I'll be basing upon 15.0 since 15.0 is the one that we are of need to be you know converted and siya lang naman given so up to three significant figure okay i mean not that hindi dahil siya lang yung nag-iisang given kundi dahil ito pong 15.0 yung kino-convert natin at siya lang ang may pagbabasihan ng uh, least significant figure so three sig fig so we'll be copying up until this figure so 0 0.234 okay so, I actually have the same N, just like the PowerPoint. So, at this point, okay, this will be your N. Okay na po yung given nating N for the equation. So, lahat po ng given ay provided na. And yes, given pa lang po yan. ba ang isasolve natin ay volume. Ito talaga yung inaanap natin. Okay na si R, okay na si temperature, okay na si pressure. Ngayon, naging okay na yung N. Okay? Unit mole na siya. And at the same time, naka C2H2 substance na rin siya, which is yung hinahanap din natin. So at this point, we can now proceed with the main um, solving or the main solution. So you have here, V is equal to NRT over pressure. Okay, so just let me look back at the previous slide, which is the problem. So, my N is my recent answer, this one, 0.234. So, I'll be writing 0.234 moles of C2H2 multiplied by R, 0 0.0821 liter atmosphere all over mole Kelvin. And then, multiplied by temperature from the problem, my temperature is 298 Kelvin all over pressure. According to the given, my pressure is... This one, one atmosphere. So I'll be writing one atmosphere. Okay, all over one atmosphere. Show the cancellation of units. Mole is cancelled. Atmosphere is cancelled. Kelvin is also cancelled. The remaining unit is liter. Okay, liter of C2H2. Which is the one that we need because we are to solve for volume. So input this one in the calculator. Okay, so we have here um, 0 0.234 times 0 0.0821 times 298 all over 1. We have this particular bit. So looking at your given for least significant figure. Okay, so my least significant figure among the given. Okay, so I'll be using um, your 0.234 is 3 sig fig. And then your 298 Kelvin is 3 sig fig. And then your 1 atmosphere is 1 significant figure. Okay, so we have 1 significant figure. So input this one in the calculator. So we have this one. So I think now the answer is 6 liters. Okay, 6 liters. So the answer is 6 liters. However, according to the problem, what we need is in the unit milliliter. So, I need to convert 6 liters into milliliters by 1 liter, 1,000 milliliter. Cancel, cancel. 6 times 1,000, you have 6,000 milliliters of C2H2. Therefore, this is my final answer for this particular gas stoichiometry calculation, which is the volume 6,000 milliliter C2H2. Okay? Okay. So, I hope you understood a thing or two on how we may apply your ideal gas equation or any other gas so if needed siya for the gas stoichiometry calculation. But again, that's the gist of it. That's a summary. In a gas stoichiometry calculation, most of the time you have your chemical equation, which involves gases for the reactants or the product. And then afterward, there are some factors or there are some quantities that you need to solve for. You may use ideal gas or if the need arises, you may use other gas laws. Okay? Again, I hope you learned a thing or two on how 
we apply or paano natin nilalapat ang gas stoichiometry gamit ang ideal gas o ang mga iba pang gas no, kung kinakailangan ito. Okay? Okay. Alright. At this point, we are now on the last part or the tail end of our discussion which is all about diffusion and effusion of gases. Okay? So, first, let me just um, give a definition of what diffusion and effusion of gases are. So, with the PowerPoint. Now, this theory has the following postulates or assumption. Now, for diffusion, the process by which gas molecules gradually spread through or, mi through or mixes with another gas. So, meaning to say, diffusion is simply the process wherein your gases or your gas molecule gradually o dahan-dahan na kumakalat o nagahalo-halo sila. Ulitin ko po, ang diffusion po ang proseso kung saan ang mga gas molecule ay dahan-dahan o gradual na kumakalat o kaya'y nagahalo-halo silang magkakasama. Okay, diffusion. So, kumbaga, ito ay pagkalat o pagkahalo-halo ng mga gas molecule. Now, this is brought about by concentration gradient. The gas molecules will move from an area of higher concentration to an area of lower concentration. What does that mean? So, say for example, this is um, diffusion. So, from higher concentration, okay, higher concentration to lower concentration. Ibig sabihin po, ang pagkakalat po, ng mang, ang pagkalat o movement ng diffusion ay from, so say for example, these are, these are your gas molecule, from higher concentration, bakit ito higher concentration? Dahil madaming gases. Pupunta sila sa lower concentration. Itong diffusion, ganito po ang proseso. Ulitin ko po, ganito mag-travel o ganito ang direksyon. Manggagaling sa higher concentration, pupunta sila sa lower concentration. Ganun po ang direksyon ng diffusion. Bakit ito ang higher concentration? Dahil madaming gas molecule. Yung mga bilog-bilog na or circles na yan, they represent gas molecule. Okay? Theoretically. And then, since this is higher concentration, madami na sila, pupunta sila ngayon dito sa lower concentration kung saan konti lang. Konti lang ang konsentrasyon ng alin. Concentration or concentration nitong mga gas molecule. Kita naman po sa image o sa pagka-drawing na iilan lang ang gas molecule. So, as the slide suggests, the third point, the gas molecules will move from an area of higher concentration to an area of lower concentration. So, again, gas molecules will move from higher to lower concentration. So, ito yung mga gas molecule na sa higher concentration, madami sila, concentrated, pupunta dito sa lower concentration kung saan yung mga gas molecule ay kakaunti lang. Okay? Okay. Now, about the counterpart, the effusion. Effusion, on the other hand, is simply the process wherein a gas under pressure escapes from one compartment of a container to another by passing through a small opening. Ang pinagkaiba lang po ng diffusion at effusion ay si effusion po ay meron lamang dadaanan na small opening o meron lang siyang dadaanan na um, sining di butas, okay? May passageway siya dapat na daanan. Yun lang po yung pinagkaiba. Kaya diffusion ay wala. From higher to lower concentration, ganun lang. Kaya effusion, ang movement ay same from higher to lower concentration din si effusion. Ang pinagkaiba lang ay Si effusion, dapat mayroong passageway o seemingly dapat may small opening. Let me give you an example. So, this is diffusion. Remember, your diffusion is simply the mixture or the scattering of gas molecule. Pagkakalat o paghahalo ng gas molecule. Yun ang diffusion. Si effusion, ganun din naman. Kakalat at maghahalo din. Ano nga lang pinagkaiba? Si diffusion, wala nang passageway pag naghahalo o kumakalat. Kay effusion, look at the image, pag naghalo o nagkalat sila, dapat may dadaanan. Yun lang ang pinagkaiba. Diffusion, just clearly, you can spread and mix. Kay effusion, yes, they will mix, they will spread. 
However, there must be a passageway. Okay? Now, okay. Hopefully, that's clear. Now, let's move on with this one. Graham's Law of Diffusion and Effusion. In 1832, the Scottish chemist Thomas Graham found the relationship between the rates of diffusion or effusion of gases and their respective molar masses. Now, let me read the law. Graham's Law of Diffusion states that under the same conditions of temperature and pressure, the rates of diffusion for gases are inversely proportional to the square roots of their molar masses. What does that mean? To simply put this state or to simply explain what the law would like to state, okay, it simply means, this simply means that the lighter the gas particle, okay, the lighter the gas particle, it will diffuse or move faster. The heavier gas particle will move at a slower state. Okay, let me repeat. This simply means that lighter gas particles will diffuse or move faster and heavier gas particles will move at a lower rate. Lower or slower rate. Ulitin ko po. Ang ibig sabihin lang po ni Graham Stoff Diffusion Diffusion ay kapag magaan ang gas particle kakalat o magdi-diffuse, o gagalaw ito ng mas mabilis. Ulitin ko po, kapag magaan ang gas particle, mas mabilis mag-diffuse, at mas mabilis din kumalat. Sa kabilang banda, kapag mabigat o heavier ang gas particle, mabagal gumalaw o kumalat. So yun lang po, magaan, mabilis kumalat. Mabigat ang gas particle, mabagal, kumalat o mag-diffuse. Yun lang po ang gustong sabihin nitong Graham's Law of Diffusion and Effusion. Okay? Okay. Now, mathematically, we have the following equation. The, the Graham's Law of Diffusion can be expressed into two equations. Now, kung ang given ay rate, okay? Rate tulad ng meter per second, the equation will be, rate sub 1 all over rate sub 2 is equal to the square root of the molar mass of the second substance all over the square root of the molar mass of the first substance. Now, kung time naman ang provided, say for example, second, that will be, um, sorry about that, that will be t sub 2 all over t sub 1 is equal to the square root of the molar mass of the second substance all over the square root of the molar mass of the first substance. So we can have two format depending on if it's rate or time as a given. Let me provide an example. Oxygen gas is observed to diffuse through a capillary for 18 seconds. How long would it take for methane gas to diffuse through the same orifice under identical conditions of temperature and pressure. Okay? So, let me write the given first. So, given. So, given is 18 seconds. So, I think this will be T sub 1. And then, our required, our required is how long? So, that would indicate time particularly I, I think the one required here is t sub 2 and that could be also in seconds now in terms of equation since this is time we're talking about the equation that we'll be using is t sub 2 all over t sub 1 is equal to square root of m sub 2 all over square root of m sub 1 okay so double check natin so si t sub 1 i provided si t sub 2 i unknown so, dapat meron tayong m sub 2 at m sub 1. So, ganito po yan. Sa si m sub 1 at sa si m sub 2 ay mga molar mass po ng ating mga substance. Si m1, ito po ay para kay O2. Si m sub 2 ay para kay CH4. Bakit? You have your first substance as O2. So, hanapin natin yung molar mass ni O2. And then, si CH4 naman yung second substance natin. Kaya siya ang merong m sub 2. Hanapin naman natin ang molar mass niya. Okay? So, since hindi siya provided sa problem, we'll be solving for their respective molar masses from scratch. 
So, unahin muna natin sa O2. So, oxygen is 2. Okay. So, oxygen will be getting up until 2 decimal places times 16.00. And then, this one is CH4. Carbon, hydrogen, 1, 4 number of atoms. Hydrogen is 1.01. .01. And then your carbon is 12.01. Again, I'm just getting up to two decimal places. Okay, so for oxygen, for O2, we have 2 times 16.00. We have 32. 32.00 grams per mole. And then for CH4, we have 12.01 plus, sorry about that, plus... 4 times 1.01, .01, I have 16.05. So that will be my given for M1. I'll be writing 32.00 grams per mole. Then for CH4, we have 16.05 grams per mole. So at this point, my M sub 2 is already provided. And then also my M sub 1. I may now proceed by simply. Um, Deriving an equation for T sub 2. So I simply would cross multiply it. I'll have T sub 2 multiplied by square root of M sub 1 is equal to T sub 1 multiplied square root of M sub 2. And then divide both sides by square root of M sub 1 since we only need T sub 2 for our equation. I shall have T sub 2 is equal to T sub 1 times quant times the square root of m sub 2 all over square root of m sub 1. Okay? So I already have here my main equation. So I shall use this one. Okay? So t sub 2 is equal to t sub 1. My t sub 1 is 18 seconds. Okay? Multiplied by the square root of m sub 2. My m sub 2 is 16.05 grams per mole. All over the square root of m sub 1, that's 32.00 grams per mole. The unit gram per mole will be cancelled. The remaining unit now is seconds, which is the one that we need because we are to solve for t sub 2 in seconds. Okay, so input this one in the calculator. 18 times square root of 16.05 all over square root of 32.00, we have this answer. Now, look for the least significant figure among the given. Okay. Now, since your factors are here, so T sub 1 is 2 significant figure, this is 4 significant figure, this is 4 significant figure. So, 2 is the least SF among the given. So, my answer should only be having 2 significant figure as well. So up to till, or so, sorry, but up, sorry, rather up to this particular significant figure, rounding it off since the next digit to 2 is 7, I will add 1, this will be 13 seconds. So the answer is 13 seconds. I have the same solution and also the same answer being 13 seconds. Okay? Okay. Alright, I hope. Um, again, you learned a thing or two on our discussion about gas stoichiometry calculation and at the same time, a bit of a calculation or some examples as well for your Graham's Law of Diffusion and Effusion. Again, thank you and have a great day.